Anthony is here to motivate and inspire us to achieve the best that we can with what you have, regardless of your present position or condition. I'm friends with Anthony on Facebook, and he practices what he preaches on Facebook by having his status updates with this information. A little more intro. So, without further ado, I would like to call up Anthony, who's giving his third speech, Just Do It. Thank you. Thank you, Jared, for a nice introduction. You're welcome, Yeah. And if you have anything that you need to do, if there is anything that you have to do, just do it. <laughs> Don't try to do it. <laughs> do it. If things go wrong, just do it. Make them right. Just do it. Thank you, Mr. Toastmasters and my fellow Toastmasters. I am here, and you are here to achieve one thing. You're looking for a better thing in your life. You want to achieve much more than you're already achieving now. And what I will request you, what I will ask you to do, is to just do it. Just do it. If it goes wrong, just do it. And some time, get some help to do it. <laughs> but just do it. Let me hear what one uh, modern day philosopher and uh, a good poetess, well versed poetess, and uh, luckily also a fellow Toastmasters, Madame Jody Miles. She said, and I quote, if you have something to do, just do it, but don't try. Don't try it. Eliminate the word try because trying gives you the option of failure. End of quote. I would like you to know that we are here not to try to be good communicators. We are here to be good communicators. And this is what I would like you to have in mind. I would like you to be a good speaker. No, don't try to be a good speaker. Once you stand here, know that the ground is yours. Know that you have the people before you to receive what you are to, you are to say, and they are for you. They are supporting you. So when you are here, don't fear in whatever you are doing. Don't try to be a good speaker. Be a good speaker. But just do it. Just do it. In the year 1800, we had a man called Humphrey Davy. Humphrey Davy saw a need of an electric bar. He saw a need to have a light. Maybe, I guess, they were using lamps that were carrying what we would call in our country kerosene lamps. Or maybe they will come up with sticks burning. And if you if yours goes off, maybe you'll take fire from me and light yours. And this is what we do here. We encourage one another. If yours go off, I will put it up. I will help you. But I will do it. So he saw the need to invent an electric bulb, and he invented an electric bulb. He did it. He did not try to do it, he did it. Now, the problem was, once he invented the electric bulb, this bulb had not all the chemical elements right, so it would not stay for a long time. It would not stay for a day. It would stay just for a few minutes. And I guess if we had a sitting of Toastmasters back then, we would have a role called the Lights Master. And we maybe we would have three breaks in the session. The first break for the Lights Master to change, we had another 30 minutes and uh, change the lights again. And another 30 minutes and change the lights because they won't stay for the whole session. If we have the lights then, uh, here, they won't stay for the whole session because they were shot in a lifetime. And so what happened? In the year 1860 and 70, in the two decades, there arose this other man called Thomas Edison. 
And Thomas, Thomas Edison had to eliminate this problem of an electric bulb which was not going in a long time, that was not staying long, and I guess it was quite expensive. For you to maintain a house for one year, you had to chip into your pocket and get a lot of money out. A lot of exit, a lot of uh, spending, maybe uncalled for spending. So he wanted to eliminate this. And all I know, all I know is that Thomas Edison did not try to eliminate the problem. He did not try. No, he did it. He did it. And how do I know? Because anybody can try for 10 times, and after 10 times, you just give up because you are trying anyway. But Thomas Edison did it for 10 times and it didn't work. But he kept on working on it. He, he went on it 50 times, it didn't work. But Thomas, Thomas Edison, because he was committed to doing it, did not stop there. He did it a hundred times, it did not work. Tried maybe different elements, deep, uh, removing air from the glass, maybe putting another different kind of uh, uh, gas inside the bulb. And if it didn't work, he went to work again because he was not trying. He was doing it and he was determined he was going to come up with something that was going to work for a long time. So he tried it for a thousand times. Two thousand times, the experiment, doing it again and again and again, five thousand times, and he tried it for around ten thousand times. And all of them were failing until he knew that he was going to get it done. And then he was asked how he was, what he would say about the failures. Now Thomas Edison said, no, I did not fail. I did not fail. I have known 10,000 ways that are not going to work. But I have known one way that will work. And I have the light bulb. And we have it there. So this is my word to you as I finish. Whatever you have to do, just do it. Don't try it. No, 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 no. Be there, committed to know that you have to do it, and do it. If you want to be a good speaker, stand here knowing that you are going to be a good speaker, and just do it. And when you go back home, if you have to be a good parent, don't try to be a good parent. Do it knowing that you are going to be a good parent, a good husband, a good wife. But in any way, in any place, in anything that you are going to try, I would urge you, please, my friend, don't try it. Don't try it. Do it. Just do it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr.